There was a man who dreamed of a better life. He didn't like the house he lived in or the clothes he wore. In other words, he wasn't satisfied with anything around him. He wondered why other people had everything he dreamed of having, while he had nothing. I wish I had a nice house, a beautiful wife and lots of money. Then I'd be happy, the man thought every day. Then, one day, he met a magician who listened to his thoughts. The magician said he was willing to help and asked what the man wanted. The man was very excited and at first he couldn't believe his luck. Does that really happen? All I have to do is ask and I'll get it, he thought. The magician replied that he didn't want anything in return. You've been asking for so long, so I think you know exactly what you want, said the magician. I want a big, beautiful house, a beautiful woman who can cook, and I always want to have a lot of money, replied the man. All right, said the magician. Go to sleep and when you wake up tomorrow morning you'll have all that. And indeed, the next morning, the man woke up in a large, luxurious house, greeted by a smiling, beautiful wife. Breakfast was ready. Everything was perfect. There was a bank account in his name, and no matter how much he spent, the account was replenished. At first, the man couldn't believe his luck. He was delighted. But the days passed quickly, then the months, and nothing changed in his life. The man wondered what more he could want, since he had everything, and felt that he hadn't achieved the happiness he craved. So he called the magician again. Why don't I feel happy even though I have everything? The man asked the magician when he saw him again. I've made everything you wanted come true, so enjoy your happiness, replied the magician. I can't feel happy. I feel lonely in my huge house. My beautiful wife doesn't make me happy and the money I wanted so much doesn't fulfill me. Please explain, said the man to the magician. You asked me for a house, but you didn't ask me for the warmth of a home. You asked me for a wife, but you didn't ask me for love and understanding. You asked me for money, but you didn't ask me for the freedom, strength and joy that money can bring, the magician replied. The man was delighted and thanked him. Thank you. I understand everything. I want everything, everything you mentioned. Give it to me straight if you understand everything, said the man. You'll create it yourself, said the magician and disappeared. The man found himself in his old house, alone, without his wife and without any money, but now he had the confidence and knowledge of what he really wanted. He began to reflect on what the magician had taught him and realized that his approach had been wrong from the start. Marcus Aurelius once said, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. To be truly powerful, you don't need to go out and conquer things. You don't need to prove your worth. It will all come to you. People will come to you, women will come to you, job offers will come to you, money will come to you if you have that kind of inner strength, that inner power that I think is ideal for young people in the world today. In fact, we are in a very confusing time. So I understand the confusion that is happening because traditional values and traditional ideals of masculinity are evaporating. And this is very disconcerting for our future. So the most important thing here is first of all, to define an icon of what I would consider a virtuous masculine ideal for all of us to perceive and think about. This icon can be ancient, like some stoic or even fictional people I'm going to mention or people from the present day, because without a good sense of an ideal, we get a bit lost in the sea of ideas. We don't really know where we're going, what we want to achieve or what we want to aim for in life. So when I think about masculinity or what it means to be a man, I think in terms of illustrious figures today. Today, Thomas Shelby from the Peaky Blinders series is a strong representation of masculinity for men today. And that idea was that he was very soft-spoken, known as cold and calculating. He was very strong. He didn't talk much. He wasn't aggressive or pushy, but he knew who he was. He knew what he wanted. He knew what was right. He knew what was wrong, and he stood up for it. And he didn't impose himself and say to everyone, you're wrong, etc. But when he was under pressure, he was extremely strong inside. He remained calm in situations and made the best possible decisions. He was very balanced. He had the idea that you have a sense of control of your nature, of who you are. You know you're not just a person. You know that it's not just about being aggressive. It's not just about picking fights and going out into the world hurting people or putting pressure on them. That's actually a sign of weakness. As Marcus Aurelius would say, the best revenge is not to be like your enemy. True inner strength is something calm and quiet, right? So you don't feel the need to pressure people, to hurt people, to impose yourself, to show off. People who show off, who show how rich they are, how many luxury cars they have, are actually weak. 
they're actually insecure. In fact, they're incredibly immature. When you look at someone who has extreme qualities, such as bravado, arrogance, the fact that they brag about how good they are, how many women they've seduced, their luxury cars, they're actually very weak, small, tiny inside. They're trying to cover up all their weaknesses, all their insecurities with bravado. But you, as a young person, don't need any of that. When you see that, you're disgusted because it shows weakness. Someone who is really strong inside doesn't need to show off, doesn't need to talk, doesn't need to say much. That was Thomas Shelby's characteristic. He hardly ever spoke. As Cato used to say, I begin to speak only when I'm certain what I'll say isn't better left unsaid. Weak people need to talk. They need to brag. They need to show off. If you're strong inside, let your actions speak for themselves. You don't need to go on social networks like Instagram and show off all your material achievements, your cars, your money, your house. That speaks through your work, the things you've achieved, the businesses you've opened, the books you've read. You don't need to say anything. Your actions speak for themselves. As Marcus Aurelius said, waste no more time arguing what a good man should be. Be one. To find out how to be that good man, I've left a link in the first comment to help you become that good man in today's century. So let's have certain ideals, certain standards of what we consider masculinity, or what it is to be a strong man, and use that to guide us in life. So one thing is, if you're strong inside, you can take criticism. People who have this kind of false masculinity, the moment you try to challenge them or talk to them or tell them that their ideas are stupid or that maybe they don't know what they're talking about, they get very insecure and attack. They fight back and shout. We see all these trolls on the internet doing this. But if you're really strong, you can accept criticism. You can accept a mentor. You can accept someone coming into your life and saying, this is what you need to do. This is where you need to go. You're not doing it right. You need to follow this path instead of the one you're on. Another thing is that a real man, true masculinity, has deep respect for women, which promiscuity doesn't show. He doesn't feel the need to insult them, to pressure them, to dominate them. He truly respects and honors them, and he has an almost gentlemanly approach. I know this all sounds very old-fashioned, but these are values that have emerged through culture over hundreds and hundreds of years, and they have a profound meaning and importance. Marcus Aurelius, during the Antonine Plague, said, It's about the people, and in this case, it's about how you treat women, being a gentleman. So having a chivalrous attitude towards women shows inner strength and confidence, the kind of thing I think women respond to. I don't think women respond to men. They can smell an insecure man a kilometer away, and it repulses them. They also smell a man who has that kind of inner confidence, that kind of inner security, and that is deeply seductive and attractive. So having a sense of inner strength, knowing who you are, not feeling the need to brag, knowing that these are the virtues that signify strength in our culture, they become a kind of daily guide. And when you catch yourself getting emotional, panicking, shouting, angry and furious, you take a step back and say, I'm being weak, I'm falling short of this kind of ideal that I think I should follow in my life. When it comes to your career and navigating the very difficult environment that we're all dealing with, many young people think that the sign of success or proving your worth is making a lot of money early on and being able to show it. But for me, that's not what the game is about. The game is how to last. It's like the famous phrase, it's hard to get to the top, but it's even harder to stay on top. So when I look at sports and the athletes I really admire and think are fantastic, I think of Michael Jordan. I think of Tom Brady, I think of LeBron James, I think of great athletes obsessed with the game, like Kobe Bryant, people who have lasted and made history. They lasted for many years, right? They weren't just one-hit wonders. So real success and real power in life can last 10, 20, 30 years. You have a plan, you have a long-term career that you're aiming for, and your goal isn't to make a lot of money and show off. It's to become a master at what you're doing to understand your field, to be extremely creative and powerful at it, and then things will come to you. So to be really powerful, you don't need to go out and conquer things. You don't need to prove your worth. Everything will come to you. People will come to you. Women will come to you. Job offers will come to you. Money will come to you. If you have that kind of inner strength, that kind of inner power, which in my opinion, is the ideal for young people in the world today. Viktor Frankl once said, what man actually needs is not a tensionless state, but rather the striving and struggling for some goal worthy of him. 
It's very confusing at the moment because everything is so fluid and we're all supposed to think that masculinity doesn't exist anymore, that it's toxic. But real masculinity, that real kind of strength I'm talking about isn't toxic at all. It doesn't exist to hurt people. It doesn't exist to dominate, to be aggressive, to put pressure on people. It's about an inner strength, an inner confidence that you radiate outwards, and that's a beautiful thing. And I advocate that this be your ideal and your guide in these difficult times. As Zeno of Citium used to say, man conquers the world by conquering himself. And according to the Stoics, the only way a man can conquer himself is by knowing how to deal with his emotions. To learn how to deal with them, click on the video on the screen.